Uh, Mr Khan, is it going to work or is it uh, going to have been a waste of money? I think a complete waste of money for so many reasons. I mean, obviously, people who even don't, uh, you know, people who might agree with the policy or the ideas at whole, I think the way it's been drafted, what it says, I think it's just not workable. It's not going to work. Um, and as we can see this morning, just over the past two days, um, obviously, it's not pleasing anyone. No one's happy with it, you know, left, right, centre, um, either way. Um, the, the way, I mean, the way it's been drafted is so counterproductive in a way. Obviously, you know, we have the Tories right now, Rishi Sunak, his party, you know, um, Suela Braverman previously, um, you know, the champions of national sovereignty, Parliament should be supreme, and in fact, our domestic courts should be able to look at things. We shouldn't go to international courts. In fact, what they've done is um, ousted the jurisdiction of our courts, said that certain aspects of the Human Rights Act will not apply. But of course, we are still party to the ECHR. So in fact, what will happen is that instead of cases going to our domestic courts, they'll in fact be going to the European Court of Human Rights. Secondly, what they've done um, in their attempt or efforts to cut down on uh, courts interfering. Obviously, like we saw last time, there were challenges, legal challenges, to the Rwanda bill. That was one case brought um, challenging the policy as a whole. Um, now, what the, obviously the government's trying to do, what this bill says is that we can't challenge the policy as a whole. But what that means is it, these desperate, vulnerable people, anyone threatened with deportation, will want to challenge it. So what will end up is if there's 100 people um, being threatened with deportation to Rwanda, we'll have 100 different cases because they've said we can't challenge the case as a whole. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just counterproductive, really. So from what you're saying, you don't think that the planes will ever take off to Rwanda? Uh, I don't think they will. I mean, definitely, you know, the, I mean, I don't think there's any chance by spring or before the election, but I don't think they ever will. Um, and yes, I mean, it is a complete waste of money. As we were hearing just now, obviously, you know, I think, you know, the government is so confused in terms of what the purpose is. Is it really a moral issue? Is it a human issue? Or is it just a pure financial issue? Because at least when they say it's a pure financial issue, just looking at the numbers there, um, you know, if it was a workable plan, you might think, okay, there's some logic, some rationale behind it. Um, but obviously, then when they confuse things further, conflate things by attempting to say it is a moral or human issue, then of course, you know, in terms of morality or fairness or justice or humanity, that everything goes against what they're saying and it flies in the face of the policy. So I think the government just needs to be clear what is it trying to do. The Supreme Court decided that the problem with the law as it was, was or the, the plan, is that Rwanda is not a safe country. Um, looking at this draft bill now, how does the government's bill resolve that, in your opinion? I don't think it does. I mean, and we saw this anyway. Obviously, you know, um, we, the, they've got a new treaty with Rwanda now. Um, but, the, the, but the point is, you know, I mean, what Rishi Sunak is trying to do is, and like, as people were saying immediately, you know, after the Supreme Court judgment when he announced the emergency legislation, is you can't just magic away these things. The whole point is, if Rwanda is not safe, then if it wasn't safe, you know, when the Supreme Court heard the case, it wasn't safe when they decided the case last month, it's still not safe today. The point is, that's what we have to be investing in. That's what we have to be working on. Um, or, in fact, even if, I mean, I, obviously I don't agree with exporting our, you know, humanitarian responsibilities in this way, but even if we are going to, find a country that is safe. So you can't just magic it away by saying, you know, I hereby declare Rwanda to be safe. So obviously that doesn't help anyone. But we, we of course, realise what the government is trying to do as far as that is concerned. They want... Uh, the, the reason they thought Rwanda wasn't safe, my understanding, is that people could then be moved back to a, a different country, a third country, and that would then make them vulnerable um, or perhaps even worse. Um, and to that end... The government is seeking assurances from Rwanda and also considering putting lawyers in uh, Rwanda from the UK to make sure that doesn't happen. Is that not enough? Um, it's not enough. So firstly, I mean, uh, the, the point is the Supreme Court has considered all these things. I mean, obviously we had, you know, top lawyers representing the government throughout. Um, and the Supreme Court heard these arguments, heard these things, and it still assessed, um, firstly, generally how Rwanda approaches international law and how it approaches humanitarian law, how it approaches international treaties. But specifically, very, very similar to this, um, Israel just a few years ago had a very similar um, agreement with Rwanda and people were removed, people were refouled. So that's the point. I mean, you know, now we have what is um, being called, you know, an internationally binding treaty. Previously, it wasn't even internationally binding uh, before the Supreme Court interfered. So obviously there is, even if, you know, I think, I mean, it is actually quite an appalling, inhumane thing, but even if the government did really want to do it, there are better practical, uh, realistic ways of making it happen. And this bill j just isn't that. OK, well, we'll wait and see what happens later on today, see how many MPs in the House of Commons agree with you. Mr Khan, thank you very much indeed for joining us.